Okay, so I thought the first project I wanted to share with you um, is a project for a small contemporary kitchen extension. And it's a nice example of how we can use 3D and maybe like a BIM light workflow on relatively small projects in Vectorworks. And you can see here on the front cover, I've just got some nice exploded isometric views. And I'll be showing you how to do that a bit later in the webinar. Um, here we can see one revealing a bit more about the actual construction and the kind of structure. Um, so yeah, there's no reason why you shouldn't use a 3D to enhance the communication of your sort of more construction type drawings as well as your planning and visuals. So I just wanted to really kind of scroll through a number of the save views that I've created here in my drawings, my save sheets, um, really to show that I'm running a MacBook Pro. So not the most amazing hardware, but it's pretty decent. It's a 2016 model. Um, and it's a relatively decent processor. Now the latest MacBooks and iMacs are much more powerful. So, um, you know, you expect to get better performance and be able to kind of knock these renders out a bit more easily. But this is a really nice example of a sort of white card model. I'll talk about how to create that a bit later. This is just your kind of standard OpenGL type rendering. And this is a bit of a combination of OpenGL without textures and without colors and with the edges turned on as well. So I can come back to those and show you how to achieve those. Here's some elevations. Let's just click onto this sheet here. Um, and you can see really on this sheet, um, these are just basic OpenGL rendering with shadows, with some edges drawn, and using a heliodon to create some nice shadows on each elevation. Um, and there's a nice little tip I can give you about how to use heliodons, which we'll come on to a bit later. I'm also using something called ambient occlusion. So if I do just click onto that viewport and I go to lighting options, you will notice here is the ambient occlusion. And what that does, it just gives you these very nice sort of soft shadowed areas um, around these windows, that sort of thing. Just adds a little bit more realism, but it's pretty quick to do. So I'll talk about that too. So I'm just going to scroll through a few more of the um, drawings that I produced for the project. Nice little perspective, nice and sunny and bright. And again, same technique really, open gel, drawn edges, a little bit of ambient occlusion in there. But just really to show you, this kind of render took nine seconds, <clears throat> so quite fast. And here I'm rendering at 200 dpi. Um, when you do your renders, you do want to be kind of rendering on your sheet at I would say two to 300 dots per inch, not 72, which is the standard. Um, I generally render at about 200 when I'm designing. I'll knock it up to 300 when I'm doing my final previews. The good thing is I can easily do that for all the sheets later. But you'll see the difference when I come onto these sheets here in a minute in terms of render time. So here is another example of the same view. And um, this was rendered using Final Quality Render X. Now it does look a lot nicer, the shadows and the reflectivity, um, the quality of those shadows are a bit nicer and the rendering itself, you compare the two. But this did take five minutes, five minutes 27, compared to this one that took nine seconds. So what I would say is my advice is when you're using RenderWorks, you really want to be kind of using it at the right level for the appropriate stage of design. So when you're making lots of changes and constantly updating your viewports, you know, you really don't want to be waiting five minutes every single time you have to click update. Um, so if you are setting up viewports, render them with, my advice would be the OpenGL rendering settings. So let me just show you how that works. I'm going to go to OpenGL. These are the settings I would, I would recommend to begin with. High detail, um, tick all the options basically, and high level of shadows. And that's, that's going to give you a really nice result with a heliodon. And the only other thing that I've got in there is the ambient occlusion just turned on. I've upped the brightness a little bit as well. That's something that once you get a light in the model, you will want to do. Otherwise, it can look a bit dark. <clears throat> That's because the auto light gets turned off once you add in um, a heliodon, for example. So you can see quite a big difference. Let's go to the interiors and have a look at the difference there. So here's a, a nice little interior, and again, perfectly adequate when I'm doing initial designs and presenting to the client. And it's, you know, taking 15 seconds to render this one, so no, no time at all. Um, when I go to Fast Renderworks, so Fast Renderworks is a nice option um, just to quickly explore kind of a slightly better quality of rendering in terms of shadows. Uh, maybe kind of softer, softer GI, global illumination and so on. But you're talking about a minute there as opposed to 15 seconds. So quite a bit longer. 
Now, because it's fast render works, the quality of the resolution is, is not fantastic by any means. But you can see there's some nice things going on with the shadowing. Let's have a look at the next level of interior rendering. So this is using custom render works, this next one. And basically custom render works allows you to specify the individual settings. And if you look at the kind of quality of this image, it is a lot cleaner, got some nice reflectivity going on. Um, and a little bit kind of a higher resolution. So custom render works would be a good recommendation. Let's go through to high quality. Okay, so this is your custom render works on high quality now. And if I go into the render settings, you'll see here we're all on high. So that's the beauty of custom render works. You can have anywhere between low or very high. Bear in mind that low is essentially fast render works and all high is final quality. Um, so there's no real point in using all low or high. But basically you can set to high or medium and you can actually adjust things like the curve geometry as well. If that was particularly important just to have that to very high, you could. So these are kind of custom render settings. Plus you've got your individual lighting options in there as well. So custom render works 11 minutes 40. Now if you compare that to where we started, back on the beginning one, 15 seconds. You know, it is a lot nicer as a rendering, but you've got to have the time and you, you know, these are the kind of things that you would produce your final drawings I'd recommend. So let's have a look at a few other studies just to kind of give you a bit more of an impression about the kind of rendering styles I'd recommend. So this one here is going to be, let's have a quick look at the settings of fast render works. And we're, we're talking 35 seconds. That's not too bad. This one is actually more of a sketch rendering style, actually. So in here, let me just click seven and I'm just going to basically turn off those dialogues for a moment so you can see the image. So that was my visibility tool um, with the cross mode just to turn those off. So this is quite a nice little kind of stylized look um, and this is using a render work style. So the good thing with render work styles is uh, Vectorworks actually ships with a range of these so you can access them. But these are actually things that you can kind of edit and create yourselves. So if we do um, Command R and bring up our Resources Manager for a second, let's just click onto our file here. Here you can see the teapot icons are these individual render work styles. Um, so let's see if we can kind of access this one. I think it is actually that one. So let's right click and edit the style here. And you can see all the different characteristics of the rendering. Basically, we've turned off the textures We've turned off the colors, we haven't got any camera effects, and we've also set sort of different levels of quality in there just to keep it nice and fast. Um, we can also fiddle around with the lighting as well. Um, we've also got quite a lot of control over the different types of edges with a uh, renderworks look here. So you can change the thickness, even change the color of the pen and so on as well, as well as the background. So we'll click OK and let's just come back out and have a quick look at the next render style. So that's quite a nice style of look. Click onto the next one. So that's another kind of stylized view with sort of blue shadows. Okay, and you can see I've got my different dialogues here. So if I turn those on, that will reveal what those settings were for that particular one. So artistic shadow blue, I called it. Um, had blue shadows, uh, black edges, and beefed up the line weights quite a bit. So quite sketchy. And the good thing with render it styles is you can share them with your colleagues. So if you get um, a few people in the office who create some really nice styles, you can easily share those between you and load them in any time. So the last little bit I want to show you on this project was really just to kind of really um, kind of ram home the beauty of different rendering styles at different times and sort of, you know, how long it takes. So here we are at 70 DDPI and you can see the quality is not great by any means. Now do bear in mind these are all A3 sheets here. Um, so this is your final quality. You can see all of them kind of taking three or so seconds. When we get to the hidden line, it's about 40 seconds. So probably the longest actually. Final quality is only 14. And actually custom render works, interestingly, on high settings was 15 seconds. So just gives you a bit of an idea. Now let's go down to 200 dpi, which is normally recommended, and just watch the difference in times. So you kind of need to recommend every time you double the resolution, 
um, you're more or less quadrupling the render time. So here we can see at 200 dpi, if I zoom into this one, it's not bad actually. You can see the quality is pretty decent and you can see the kind of times uh, we're taking 11 seconds rather than three. That was 12 seconds for custom render works. So not bad. Um, high quality. This is our sort of best quality custom render works. And that was taking one, point, uh, 1 minute 27 seconds. Again, final quality a little bit less and the hidden line um, about the same actually. So hidden line is the same whatever the resolution, that's the key. Finally, let's go on to our very high quality renders for maybe say planning stage and planning output, 300 dpi. Um, so here we can see even open gels taking 20 seconds, fast render it's 24, it was three to begin with, 25. So you know, you're talking a big order of magnitude and these are kind of taking about three, three minutes or so. So it's actually not too bad, but it is, a considerable amount more time than the early stage renderings. So what I hope you get from that is um, when you can use OpenGL, okay, hidden line is actually one of the slower rendering options, but it doesn't really depend on the resolution or the dots per inch um, of your model. Final quality um, in custom render works are the kind of better quality renders that you get, but they will take a lot longer, particularly as you crank up the resolution. So I recommend, you know, you need to experiment with the OpenGL and maybe the fast render works at early design stage. Potentially you can move on to the medium when we want slightly higher quality. And you really save the final quality and the custom render works options for, you know, the really high quality visuals just before you go to planning and you do your final set of drawings. So I hope you find that interesting. In a moment, we'll take a look at another project and I'll show you some more examples of RenderWorks on a different kind of project. But before we do that, I actually want to get into the nitty gritty of how to use the RenderWorks tools and where to find them. So let's have a look at this in this next section of the webinar.